Shalom. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rokhar Kodash, Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, whom this world ignorantly calls God, and Yahweh Shai being the name of His only begotten Son, whom this world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who do rule well. And peace and mercy to the hopeful elect, the 144,000, the men that are doing this work in sincerity and in truth, preaching the truth of the Bible and much love to the one third of you believers out there. To you all, I say shalom and greetings, and I pray, Lord willing, that this lesson is edifying. I'm your fellow servant, Yeshia. All right, and um, it's been getting ramped up with uh, uh, Christianity right now, and they're them approaching brothers and things like that. It's because for some reason, they think they got the cheat code now, all right? <laughs> they think they understand the Bible. But look. It was many brothers that that understand the Bible now that didn't before that were following Christianity, following different walks of life, if you will, right? But now, once the Holy Spirit enters, enters a man, that's when you're able to break down and understand the Bible. And actually, I didn't even intend to get this precept, but a uh, uh, one big thing that the uh, the Christians don't realize is. Just because you're calling yourself a Christian and you go to church on Sunday does not mean you understand the Bible, right? And matter of fact, when you read the book of Acts and two verses, I think Acts uh, uh, 7 and Acts 17, right? They both state that the, the hand, that the Lord dwelleth not in temples made with hands. So just because you're in a church, the Lord is not in there. His spirit isn't in there. You're, you're led by false pastors. You're led by uh, 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 men that are breaking the law, statutes, and commandments of the Lord, you know, who are use his his uh, uh, grace for a cloak of maliciousness. You know, y'all take the Lord's grace and just run with it as if you have to keep no laws in the Bible. Right. And now we're not saved by the law. We're saved by grace. But you don't practice anything that the Bible says to practice, which is a huge problem. All right. But let me start with this. This is Amos 3 and 7. It says, Surely the Lord power, Yahweh, will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So you have to understand that the Lord has to have put his spirit upon you. He has to reveal it to you. You can't think that, oh, I just got the truth and my pastors taught me well. No, there becomes a point in your life when you understand the truth of the Bible and, and we, the, you know, not to sound proud, but we know, we know the people that are not following the Bible. We can identify you easily. Um, and this is not based on how you look, but a part of your look may be a part of it. There are certain details we can look at just by looking at you. But even beyond that, once you start speaking, we understand what you believe. We understand based on what you say, that you don't have a sincere spirit and that you don't really know how the uh, heavens work. That you don't know how the, the Heavenly Father and His Son works, right? You don't understand what the Bible is trying to speak. You see what I'm saying, right? The scriptures say, uh, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to those that are lost, right? The uh, uh, and, and that's true. And we, we've been seeing it time and time again, more of these Christians coming up and getting cut, man, you know, and to, to the point where they just don't have it. You know, but um, it's a couple of points that I wanted to bring out, mainly... You know, the Christians always speak about the Trinity. That's the big thing they've been going on lately is the Trinity, which, mind you, the word Trinity is not in the Bible. But they're trying to say that God, the Messiah, and the Holy Spirit are all one person. And and honestly, that's uh, that's witchcraft with that thought. With that concept, it's witchcraft. All right? Uh, having, that's like, uh, uh, you know, they got the... The alphabet community, LGB through, they got something there called uh, 2-1-A, something like that, which one of them is 2-S, 2-spirited. You see what I'm saying? If you understand by that logic, that would make the Heavenly Father and His Son a uh, uh, a schizophrenic. That would make them have a multiple personality disorder where they will be fighting with themselves about who's who's right and who's wrong. This The Heavenly Father... It sets up order in the earth, all right? There's the Heavenly Father, and we've gone through this time and time again, and it's not really that hard to understand. But I just wanted to state this point, and I'm going to bring out some points. Uh, I'm going to come back to that one, actually. Let me come back to that. But, you know, we always ask these questions like, 
Well, if they're all the same, who in the Garden of Gethsemane, who was Yahweh Shai, who's who is you called Jesus, ignorantly called Jesus, that's his real name, Yahweh Shai, who was he praying to in the Garden of Gethsemane? Right? Who was he praying to himself? Right? When he was uh, uh um constantly through the book, he talks about his father. Was he talking about himself? It just doesn't literally make any sense. Uh, when he was on the cross, he said, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. You see? So was he commending himself into his own hands? So Christians have gotten to the point where their doctrine is completely psychotic. Like of you, of you people were uh of somebody were to analyze y'all they would have to put y'all in an insane asylum based on the things that y'all say that that literally makes no sense okay and we're talking about the most high and his son the the greatest of the greats kings of kings lords of lords and y'all are making them having multiple multiple uh multiple personality disorder like the dude on uh what's the damn show uh split <laughs> you know, I forget the the uh the the character, the the actor who plays in that, but split. Like on there, one time he acts like a man, another time he acts like a woman, another time he acts like a child. You see what I'm saying? But that's not the way the Heavenly Father works. He said he is not the author of confusion, which means he everything that he does and goes about and that's written in this Bible is going to be clear and understood, but it says plain to those that uh have wisdom, is plain to the the Bible is holy, is plain to the holy. You see? And so it's just not so plain to you Christians is because y'all don't have the Holy Spirit. And, and, and see, look, instead of getting offended by that, pray on it and say, Lord, help me understand the truth. Help me understand. Give me the things that I don't have. And now it's up to the Lord because you could still be blinded because the Lord said he will set stumbling blocks for our people. So either he wants you or he doesn't. And if he doesn't want you, then you're going to stay continuously being lost, being confused, not knowing not knowing the truth, right? Um, we have, let me see, this is Ephesians 4 and verse 4. I'm going to start at, yeah, I'm going to start at 4. Yahweh Shai. The point is in 6. Um, it says, there is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. Okay? One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Okay? So this is this is clearly stating that there is a Lord, that there is one God and Father of all. Okay? So there's given us a distinction between these two people. Okay? They're, they're, the, the most high, he's the he's the it's called the heavenly father for a reason. <laughs> Right. He is above all. And that's why it says in, in you all. And this is talking about the uh, ultimately they, he was speaking to the church at Ephesus. But these are the believers. These are the Israelites who are believing. OK, he says. So his spirit is in you all. That doesn't mean he's literally his his he's his person is inside of you. OK, but that's what Christians would have you believe. OK, and I'm going to just get a couple of random scriptures real quick. And then I'm going to go to the main chapter that I want to pull out. This is in red letter, John 14 and two. It says, in my father's house are many mansions. This is the Lord speaking. This is Yahweh Shah speaking. Why would he say in my father's house? Why, if it was him, why wouldn't he just say in my house? Right. It said, if it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. And this is talking about the uh, uh, elect that are going to be receiving, uh, um, you know, the different planets and the different things that are set up for the kingdom of heaven. You know, from Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, right? And and not not to mention that, why don't they have the same name? And that's a big that's a big uh problem for you guys too, since you don't know God's name, you don't know that they're two different entities, right? You just say God, or you call him Jehovah, or something like that. You know, Yahweh. Well, why wouldn't they be saying if that was the case? Why wouldn't they both have the same name? You see, they're not the same person. They are two completely different people. There's Yahweh and there's Yahweh Shai. Okay. It says, uh, verse 12, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, 
The works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my father. He's going unto his father. If he was, if he was the father himself, where would he be going to? You see? And um, uh, I just had a point, too. It says, he that believeth on me, the works that I shall do. Right. You know, Yahweh Shah was always letting you know about his father. He says, uh, um, I'm going to have to come back to that. Uh, it's, he talks about how, uh, about being a witness. Let me see. John 8, that's a good one. It was one in John 5, too, I think. John 8. It says, uh, I think I brought this out recently. This is John 8 and 16. It says, and yet if I judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I and the father that sent me. You see, so he's letting you know that he, he is not the same person as his father. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. <laughs> you see that? He didn't say one. He said the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself. And the father that sent me beareth witness of me. They said unto him, where is thy father? Why wouldn't he say, why wouldn't he answer and just say, I am my father, right? This is, it's like, it's crazy that we even got to discuss this. It says, Yahweh shall answer, ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. And really that's a cut to Christians right there too. You know, you neither know Yahweh shall nor you know Yahweh. If you know them, you shouldn't, you should know Yahweh, but they don't know either one. They don't know who the Lord is. They don't know who the heavenly father is. So that's why they're so confused. Okay. And, uh, um, it's, it's, it's messing up my mind. I did have a great point that I really want to bring out. Um, but if the, if it's the Lord's will it'll come back to me, uh, this is John five and 19, then answered Yahweh shy and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the father do. So he's seeing another, another man, another entity do something for what things whatsoever he doeth. These also doeth the son likewise. Right. So he's doing after the manner of his father for the father loveth the son and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. You see, so he's letting you know there's a clear distinction between these two. Okay. Why does he say he that denieth me uh, before men shall be denied before my father, which is in heaven. You see, um, you know, and, uh, they, brothers brought up a great point at camp, uh, in Matthew 24, uh, in Matthew 24, it states, um, somewhere around the 30th, the 31st verse, 36 verse, somewhere in there, it says that no man knoweth that day but the father only, not the angels, <laughs> only the father. So, so, so is there something that if they're the same person, why wouldn't they both know that? This is letting you know, easy peasy that that's really the end of discussion. I'm, I'm out of fact, I'm going to bring that scripture out right after I read this one, John five and 23, it says that all men should honor the son, even as they honored the father. He that honoreth not the son, honoreth not the father, which hath sent him. Easy, cut, cut, you see? Cut, man. Christians, Christian, Christianity is a hell of a drug. And brothers, you know, for those that understand this, if Christians hear this, hey, we were, we were lost in the sauce at one point too. We were just like y'all. We didn't know what we talking about. We didn't know who we were. We didn't know we were the Israelites. We didn't know who you ignorantly call Jesus is a so-called black man who's coming back to save the uh, the Israelites. We didn't we didn't know that either. But the Heavenly Father opened our eyes and he showed us the truth. He showed us uh, uh, what what his will is. OK. I'm going to go to the book of Matthew 24. Um I said 31. How did I get that one confused? I, but the L30, oh, I did say 36. Matthew 24 and verse uh 36. Matter of fact, I started 35 for the for the point uh to help. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And that's talking about this ruler, this current rulership, because the earth shall never be destroyed, nor heaven. All right. Um, but that's talking about this current rulership where the Edomites are ruling the earth. He said, that's going to pass away, but my word shall not pass away. 
It says, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, right? So no man knows this day, the judgment day. No man knows that day. It says, no, not the angels of heaven. The angels don't know. But my father only. <laughs> that's that's a closed book. Only the father knows. So, and this is in red letter too. So why would, yeah, why would the Lord and Savior, and who, Yahweh Shah, who's a great man, the greatest man that ever walked the earth, if they were the same person, why would he be saying that? Because his father knows something that he doesn't. It's because his father has the ultimate authority, right? That's something he reserved for himself. That's some, That's what a, a true God, a true, hey, even if you have like a, um, and this is low level, but if you got like a mob boss or something, they might give out certain money to people. They might have certain things and uh, and once they're washing, washing in certain businesses, you know, but they always got like certain jewels or gems or uh, like Pablo used to have uh, money dug under the dirt. You know, it's something special that you got reserved just for you that nobody can be able to access. And that's low level. So how much more the day of the Lord? Right. And so I want to go to this chapter and, you know, I'm going to try to get a couple of these verses. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but and then I'll wrap it up. But this is uh, and this is 144. Call call. This is John 17. So my first question is, if you understand the Bible, you know that John 17 is about his prayer to the Most High, his father about uh, uh, at this time, the apostles. So his, his men that he had around him, he was praying for them, right? Why wouldn't he just bless himself? Okay, but let me read some of these so we can get some understanding. This is John 17 and one. These words spake Yahweh Shah and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. You see that? So he's, this is a communication this is a dialogue between two individuals, right? He says, the hours come glorify thy son. He's saying, glorify me, Lord, so I can glorify you also, right? This is a discussion, right? A request, if you will. It says, as thou has given him power over all flesh, right? So he said he was given power over all flesh from his father, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou has given him. So he said he had to be given that from his father. He don't just have the authority to do it. His father gave him that, right? It says, um, it says, and this is life eternal that they might know thee, the only true God and Yahweh Shai Mashiach, whom thou hast sent. So there's only one true God and he sent his son, right? So then Yahweh Shai says, I've glorified thee on the earth. Who is he glorifying? He didn't say, I glorify myself, thee. When you hear thee in the Bible, it means thy or your, or you, I've glorified, he basically, I've glorified you on the earth. I've finished the work which thou gavest me to do. He was given that from his father. And now, O father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. You see that? So <laughs> he said before the world was, it was just me and you, right? And we brought that out in Proverbs, the eighth chapter on, on camp day. But I'm going to read this one in the NLT real quick. It says, now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began, right? Because it was just Yahweh Shai, the first spirit created, daily rejoicing in his delight of his father being taught many things, okay? It says, I have manifested thy name. So the Most High has a name whose name is Yahweh. It isn't God. You can call him that if you know his real name, right? But saying God and you don't know his real name. Error number one, because you're going to have to know his name in order to get to be delivered. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. All of these words given context that he's another person. It says thine. They, so when you talk about Yahweh Shah, he came down in the flesh as a man. Right. Which, mind you, he's been here many times before. He's been here as Adam. He's been here as Isaac. He's been here as King Solomon. He's been here as Melchizedek. He's been here as other people, but you don't, people don't understand that. Was he, was he God in all of those lifetimes? <laughs> you know, cause y'all don't understand, but that's if you can receive it, that's a little bit above y'all pay grade, but he was those men, right? Was he God as all of those men too, right? No, it was, that, the, those were all done for a reason. Reincarnation is real. And the most high is the one who is sending him down here. It says, um, 
Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou has given me are of thee. So he's like, everything you gave me, that's coming from you, right? That's your spirit, okay? It says, for I've given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them and have known surely that I come out from thee, right? It says, uh, well, let me jump over. I'm going to jump to verse 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I and I'll, honestly, this chapter relates to now to the elect. It's, it's uh, transcended, ascended to the elect. Now, now we know that this prayer is for us. It said, Lord willing, we be a part of that number. All right. It says, and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. So this is talking about the agreement in, in spirit, right? It, the scriptures talk about uh, uh, be of one mind, okay? And I, uh, another scripture just came to my mind too. But let me let me go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and get that, right? You be of one mind. It's Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians one and ten something somewhere in that. Hold on, let me get it. Same mind, judge. First Corinthians one. I, thought, I pulled that one out first. It's crazy. First Corinthians one and ten. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach, that ye all speak the same thing, and there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So the Heavenly Father, His Son, the angels, and the elect are perfectly joined together in the same mind. That does not mean we're the same person. We are not Yahweh. We are not Yahweh Shai. We're not even the angels. We are angels, but we're not the celestial angels. Okay? But we he says that they may be one as we are. So that doesn't mean that all does it was okay. When, let's say when he was talking about the apostles. Does this mean they're all of the apostles from 12 went to, they're really just one man? No. Matter of fact, in the NLT it says, Now I am departing from the world, they are staying in this world, but I'm coming to you. Holy Father, you have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so they will be united just as we are. This doesn't mean it's going to be a big conglomerate of multiple personality disorders going on. All right. It's really easy. It's an easy concept. It's not that hard to understand. And matter of fact, I had taken a picture earlier. Um, let me see if I can find it really quickly. Um. Lord willing, I can bring it out. Oh, so there's a scripture in Philippians that says he thought it not robbery to make himself equal with God. And I went into that word equal because Christians like to bring that, out, bring that out. But that means they're just one in agreement. And we say that all the time. But the word there for equal is, is esos. And it says um, equal in quantity or quality. But then it says to agree together. <laughs> okay. To agree together. That's what's down there in the Strong's. To agree together. All right? So it, it, it's, it's so easy. <laughs> what do they say? It's so easy a caveman could do it. But clearly not for Christians, man. But the, um, the main reason is because you all don't like, you all lack the Holy Spirit. You lack a demonic spirit. You go into those churches and they're putting demons on you. They're robbing you and taking your money, telling you to break the law of the Most High. And it's putting demons on you. And y'all, so y'all have multiple multiple personality disorder. And that's why y'all are going through this. This is why you're having these issues because the Heavenly Father's spirit is not on you. Y'all be talking about three people in one, but that's what y'all got demons on y'all. Y'all be the same way. And that's because y'all got multiple spirits. You're getting drunk all the time. You're smoking weed. You're doing drugs. You're having, being an adulterer or adulteress. You got all of these spirits on you, so you're thinking that the Most High should be the same way, but he's about perfection and order. He wouldn't do that, okay? This is uh, uh, John, John 17 and 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they may all be one, okay? Here we go, that they may all be one. So does this mean that the apostles and uh, believers are going to all be one person? No, that they may be all one in agreement, one in the mind. And that's how the men of the Lord are going to be one in the same doctrine. The elect are going to have the same mind. It's because you work better as a unit. When you have a, a football team or you have an army, 
when they all are on the same accord, the team functions like with fluidity. It functions like water because everybody knows their role. Every that's how you win the game because everybody when when you got basketball team and they're passing the ball to each other they're working the ball around right and then they give it to the person to shoot and the guy is set up for the pick and rebound and all that kind of stuff they're working as one it's called a unit for a reason you know hey, you know they're united <laughs> okay it says that they may all be one as thou father art in me he says the father is in him does this mean that the father is literally in him his spirit is in him. It says, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. You see that? Why would these uh, apostles, why would these disciples be one in them? And they were, he said, he just said a minute ago that I go to leave them and so I can come to you. So how would the men that are on earth going to be one with the Most High and Yahweh Shai and they're in the heavens? It's because through the doctrine, through the understanding of the Bible, through the Holy Spirit, all right? It says that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. He said, so the world can believe. That's how now we preach the, we preach the Lord. The Lord, the world's going to know that Yahweh is sending Yahweh Shai, right? He's coming again. It says, and the glory which thou givest me, I've given them that they may be one, even as we are one. This is not talking about, so how, so you saying now the apostles and the elect are, is a trinity, <laughs> you know, oh, no, no, no. Matter of fact, I don't know what to make it when it's for, but it's a, it's a quartery now, you know, it's, it's four, it's four uh, components now, right? You see what I'm saying? But this is what Christianity, that drug of Christianity has destroyed our people, okay? It has destroyed our people. Verse 23, I in them and thou in me that they may be perfect in one and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved me and thou hast, thou hast loved them and has, thou hast loved me. You see, so he's letting you know that we're united in the same mind, in the same doctrine, and in the same spirit, in the same faith. This is not about being one actual person with multiple personalities. Father, I will that they also whom thou has given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. So he is he this would make him a narcissist if he was saying, I'll I love myself before the foundation of the world. No, the father loves his son before the foundation of the world. All right. It says, oh, righteous father, the world hath not known thee. And that's right. They don't know Yahweh. They, they, they thinking he's the son. <laughs> you think the most high got off his throne and came down? No, no, that never happened. Oh, righteous father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me. So the real men of the Lord are going to know that Yahweh Shai was sent, who you eagerly call Jesus, was sent from his father, was sent from the Most High. They're not the same person. And I've declared unto them thy name and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. You see? So this is plain, it's easy to understand, man. You know, I, I made it plain as day for y'all. So for anybody who's still confused, the Lord is just not dealing with you. I'm just going to be honest. You know what I mean? At least right now, and the Lord ain't dealing with you, but you better pray that he do because it's about to get terrible out here in America. And all you Christians that don't believe and don't call on the name and repent and get your lives together and stop doing the wicked things that y'all doing, the Lord is going to destroy all of y'all. All of y'all are going to uh, be in that lake of fire, which is going to be thermonuclear missiles burning America. Y'all going to be here bathing in it, you know, but hey, I'm going to wrap it up with that. I pray, Lord willing, that this lesson was edifying. I want to give all the praise, the honor and the glory. To Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Ochakodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who do rule well. And peace and mercy to the elect. Until next time, Shalom.